Hey guys, it's Lainey, and today is Top 5 Wednesday. Today's Top 5 Wednesday topics are our top 5 favorite worlds across any uh, spectrum. So it can be dystopian, it can be fantasy, it can be anything. I know I did Top 5 dystopian worlds a really long time ago, so I thought the Top 5 worlds as a whole would be a really fun topic to do. So let's get started. Coming in at number 5 is The World of Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. You guys know how much I love this book. It is so good. And what I really love about this is that there is a map, so you do see what the world looks like. Each country of these, of the three kingdoms that we follow in this novel, is so unique and so really well written and they each have their own customs and their own traditions and their own just like way of living and wealth and status and everything like that. There's a little bit of me that loves each and every kingdom that's a part of this world for different reasons. So during the Falling Kingdoms live show we talked about which one we'd rather be living in. I feel like I said Limeros because they're the most prosperous of the three countries. I would love to live in Palasia because it's more of like a chill kind of a little bit poorer, but still a more exciting kind of village-like setting. And Aranos is really cold, which I feel like I wouldn't like, but I'd also like because then, you know, my hair wouldn't get frizzy, so I wouldn't mind living there. Coming in at number four is the good old reliable The Hunger Games. Pan Am is the first world I read about that is completely different than the other ones that I've ever read before. This was the first dystopian book I ever read, so there's something very special about Pan Am in in my heart. I feel for this like country and I love finding out more about it and I love, you know, seeing it visually on screen through all the movies. While I wouldn't particularly want to live in Pan Am in any of the districts to be honest, uh, I just I love the complete world that Suzanne Collins created. Um, for this like novel and the series and it's just I, I mean I love it. I, there's nothing wrong to me with Pan Am. It's so uniquely thorough. There's not one thing out of place. Coming in at number three is a book I read back in June and that is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. This book is so intricate. It's so well developed. It's so well thought out. It's so well written. It's just incredible. It's cr truly an incredible world. Yes, the first book does establish a lot of, um, you know, the exposition of the world. It's still such a great book and it's just not an information dump the entire book. Inside there's a lot of maps. Let's see, we have the Seven Orders of Clairvoyance, which is, um, you know, the map, like not so much magical, but the, the gifted people of this world. We have, you know, a map of the neighborhood and everything, and even at the end, there's a glossary of all the new terms and uh, the jobs and just everything. Everything that's in this book that needs to be explained is here. And it's just so well thought out and I absolutely love this world. I cannot wait until The Mind Mortar which comes out in January. And it's just, it's such a unique world. I loved throwing myself into this world. Coming in at number two is The World of Avalon by Mindy Arnett. This book is a science fiction adventure story and I've compared it to Fast and Furious in Space so many times throughout my videos every time I've mentioned it. It is just so unique. Just from the space stations to the ships to uh, learning about the different planets and the different space stations and the ports and uh, how people live in the different you know space stations and everything like that. I really enjoyed learning about this world and I really 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 love it. So that's why this one's at number two because it is it's not it's not a fantasy, it's not a dystopian, it's just straight up science fiction and I, I loved this world. And coming in at number one is the world of the Grisha trilogy from Shadow and Bone. This one also has a map in it, right? Ooh, a map. The storytelling in this book is so incredible, but the world is just so unique and uh, these places that are mentioned, I feel like I know. I know these places. And I can't even say, it's just everything about this is perfect. The world is literally perfection and I know a ton of people are going to agree with me for that. So that's why this book is number one for my favorite worlds. And those are my top five favorite worlds. I would love to know what are some of your favorite worlds. Harry Potter would be number six for me. It's just I have been so out of the loop with the wizarding world that it's just, I don't know, I just, I can never include Harry Potter anymore in my top five because I just feel so far removed from it. So I feel I'm going to be rereading the series. I mean, it's there. It's one of my favorite worlds as well, but it's just I've read these ones more recently 
and I don't know. So yeah, that's that's the explain explanation of why the Wizarding World is not on my list. So I hope you guys love a really great Wednesday, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Bye.